Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're back in Forza Horizon 4 today in the 1967 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. As you can see, this is, as I was getting ready to say, an extremely underpowered car. But they're very cool and a lot of fun. Um, in the hot rodder scene and the uh, custom car scene, they're fairly popular body style to go with. I'm going to drive with a controller here so I can actually look around the car and stuff as we drive back to the house. But they were fairly popular cars. They had really nice swoopy lines. They have like an almost Studebaker look to them, especially in the front end there. It's got more of an Italian or American look than a Volkswagen look. Just, we'll leave it at that. But because of that, they became very popular cars to customize, things like that. But today I want to do something different with this car, something I think it would be fairly proficient at. And that is build it into a rally car and do some vintage rallying with it and have some fun. I think this would be a great chassis. If you think about it, it's a very similar layout and chassis design to the Renault Alpine, which is a legendary rally car during its time it was an absolute monster even though it wasn't the fastest it's just a very capable car this thing just has no power going uphill Let's see if downshifting helps us here a little bit but yeah they were just an amazing car for rallying and looking at the Ghia its rear engine rear wheel drive almost the same weight distribution in fact so I think this could be a very, very, I don't want to use proficient again, a very effective rally vehicle, at least in like a vintage rallying scenario. So let's take a quick look around the car in Forza Vista if you guys haven't had the chance to unlock the car yet and have a look around. As you can see, it's just kind of the standard Volkswagen layout, it's just the engine looks like it's moved forward a little bit, which really, if you think about it, and you cut it off at the back, right about where the engine ends, and then cut it off up here, we have pretty much the same layout as the Beetle, just with a longer wheelbase. And then looking here at the interior, compared to a lot of Volkswagens up till this point, this thing's actually pretty nice inside and not quite as sparse and basic looking we'll go over here see what kind of upgrades we can do to it as far as taking it to my goal of having a rally car let's go and check out what engine swaps this thing can have that's probably gonna be what I end up putting in it and I probably won't add a ton of power on top of it the flat 4 turbo rally would be a pretty good option too probably. I just, I don't know if I want that much torque immediately on bottom end. I think that'd be a really bad idea with how light this is, because as you can see up here, it's only a 1700 pound vehicle. So let's go ahead and stick, we'll stick with this flat four, just the standard turbo. Um, I believe this, as I say, I think we have a different bumper option and then a bumper delete, which looks absolutely hilarious. You can really see though, looking at the front with that bumper gun, what I mean about like the Studeba or Studebaker styling to the front end almost. It's got that central point that comes up and then the two protruding headlights that jut forward. Pretty similar lines. You know, since I'm going to be doing this as a rally car, I think that would stock bumper might be a pretty good option just to leave on there because it gives it that little bit of extra impact resistance there. It's almost like a little mini bull bar or something. I mean, we can throw the roof rack on it since I'm rallying it. Why not? Well, luggage rack. You can always throw some spare tires or fuel up there if you're out doing a rally, though. 
Stick with that bumper. We do have more options for this thing than I thought on the outside, which makes sense because, like I said, they would customize these cars a lot in the 70s and late 60s, too. Throw some track width on here since we're definitely going to be rallying it. All right, for rims, I really think these would look good on it, at least once we repaint them. They look kind of over everything. Just They're really gaudy looking, let's just put it that way with the gold. I'm gonna go max tire width in the... That's actually a pretty beefy tire. At least on this, a 245 is not huge, but on this car it looks pretty massive. 225's in front, that's actually what I was gonna go with anyways. So that works out perfectly. Obviously we're gonna go rally tires. Do full drivetrain upgrade. Got brakes. Obviously, we're going to go rally springs and dampers. Upgrade sway bars so we can play around with how the body roll affects it. Alright, for the roll cage, what I usually look at is what it does. Not really so much is upgrading like my handling and braking. A lot of times what I'm looking for is what it does to my weight distribution. Which, as you can see, we go from 43 to 44, which it's better to have closer to 50-50 weight distribution. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and go with it. We also could have went with just the standard, what is it, street or whatever, sport chassis upgrade. Which would have moved it back too, but then we don't get that extra little bit of braking and handling. For lightning, I'm, just, I'm not doing anything. 2,000 pounds is really light already. This car is probably going to be a little twitchy because of that and we're already halfway up a class so what we're going to do here i'm going to throw race exhaust because it'll drop a little bit of weight and it helps you it makes the car louder so when you're driving it's kind of easier to know where you're at in the rev range and we'll do full race cam since this thing does like to pick up on top end and then rallying it helps having that little bit of extra power band too when you're sliding through corners Alright, so with the flywheel upgrade, that put us right to the top of A-Class, which is exactly where I wanted this car to be at. We'll go ahead and install the setup here. It's actually a pretty expensive upgrade, but considering how far we brought the car from D-Class, that's not really that crazy. This thing definitely sounds nice with that flat four in it, but I kind of expected it to. Oh, this livery doesn't change these stupid rims. You know what? I'm kind of eating my own words right now, but they actually don't look absolutely horrible on this car with this livery. I really wish it was like a brushed gold, but they don't look terrible. It's a very, very nimble car, even with the suspension set up kind of soft. Oh boy, the way it is. I'm going to jump in here and bring my uh, roll bar stiffness up just a little bit. I don't think that's really it. I'm pretty sure it's more between springs, which support the body's weight itself and helps slow down the movement of the shock. So bring these up just a little bit here. And then I'm going to add just a little bit to the front rebound. Actually bring it up just a touch more. And then we'll bring our bump stiffness up just a little bit front and back. And that should hopefully stop a little of that body roll because we want some because we're going to be rallying it so we want it to be able to absorb bumps just that was a little bit excessive
Definitely think I made the right decision going with that flat four. This thing's so much more fun. It sounds amazing with it too. Alright, I just want to take it for a quick test drive. Let's go ahead and find dirt race we can jump into real quick. Actually, you know what? It's been a while since I've ran the gauntlet. Let's do this. Okay, so I did jump in here on the gauntlet, but I did make a uh, custom blueprint so I could just run anything goes A class. That way it wouldn't be restricted to just the small variety of call cars, and it'd be some very, very odd cars in here with the Carmen Ghia trying to rally, and I just didn't think it would be a very good fit. A class, anything goes, gave me kind of a weird group of vehicles too a lot of Chargers, a couple Audis. I believe there's only one Raptor in this one. Oh, sent me into the wall. I can't even move that Charger around whatsoever. I was in his rear quarter panel and he just kind of shoved me off of him. Oh, come on. That's the really, really difficult part about rear engine cars, especially off-road, is you got to keep that rear end from wanting to just swing around because that's where all your weight really is. Definitely a lot of throttle management. Okay. Okay, AI. Just settle down a little there. Back in my door again. I really wish I could use look back on my wheel. I even tried mapping it because I don't know if you guys know this, but we can custom map all our buttons on the wheel now. I don't know when this was added in. I haven't. Okay, for focus, Fiesta, one of those two. But you can actually map all the buttons on the wheel now, which is pretty amazing. But for some reason, I can't get look back to work binding it to any key I have over here on my little button pad. This does not work, and if you look back with a the controller, then you lose steering and throttle control on the wheel for a second, and it just, it doesn't work out very well usually. I was so excited when I went to look into the settings today, because I was going to uh, change my photo mode button, and realize we can actually custom map everything for the wheel. Then I was really let down when what I was trying to do did not work at all. Oh, okay, I'm just going to rewind here. This is too long of a race to start over. So go back just a little bit more, because that Audi kind of really ruined our line. AI is being fairly aggressive today. Especially that Ford in front of us. He just about completely annihilated me when he came flying through there. They're being really aggressive and breaking in the wrong places and turning in just sporadically. Sounds like a day in Forza. Get that rear engine oversteer coming through these sweepers a little bit. Gotta watch out for this bridge. You definitely do not want to go into that thing. You'll stop real, real fast. It is not good. Ooh, that was close. That was really close. The one bad thing I'm really seeing here about me being up against all these American vehicles and this little Volkswagen Carmen Ghia is they have way more weight than I do so they can just push me around and they get a little bit more traction I feel like maybe not because most of my weight is on the drive wheels I might actually have a little bit of an advantage there but two they're so large 
it's impossible to find a good place to get around them. Like they're not leaving me hardly any windows to get through. And then when I start to come through, that was my bad. No, it wasn't. Somebody hit me from behind. Come on now, AI. Can we... I know we're off-road it, but can we clean up the racing just a little bit? But as I was saying, they're so large, when you do finally manage to find a little tiny gap to get around, it's so minuscule. And then they just cut in that little bit and destroy me because I'm so much smaller and lighter than all of them. The only thing I'm even near being the same size of is that Focus or Fiesta. I'm not really sure which it was, but even then he's got me in weight probably by close to a thousand pounds. And I'm absolutely terrified of getting up here by this Raptor because that's literally like two of my cars put together is that Raptor, if not a little bit more than two. Oh, that snap oversteer is just so gnarly to get used to. I don't really drive a lot of rear engine cars specifically because I'm not very good at handling them. I don't understand how they pitch sometimes or what I'm doing wrong. It all comes down to just needing more practice really, but just not my preferred layout of vehicle in the first place. So far we're not doing terrible though, especially considering the massive vehicles we're up against. I figured I would have been shoved off the road and going to take a look at the scenery a long time ago, but we're still in it in fourth place. Still got plenty of race left to make a comeback. I really do love doing this race, I really need to do it more often. It's one of the few things in this game where you can actually get a decent length race, and it's just such a varied terrain, it really tusks your car out. And if you're racing on a wheel with really high force feedback, it does a nice job of testing out your stamina for racing without any kind of brake. Obviously no endurance race, but a lot longer than any of the other layouts just about. Starting to close this gap up a little bit. Trying to drive a little more cautiously because you do got to be really careful for snap oversteer in this or just letting the body weight shift a little too much coming around a corner and just sliding past the point of being able to recover it. So with these rear engine cars, that little window of being able to recover it and just sliding out is very, very thin. Just trying to look up the inside there, but that Raptor just covers so much road like nowhere to go around him. Let's see if I can squeeze in. Oh, I think I actually sent him flying pretty decent there. Definitely threw him off, but I, I did swing the entire back of the car around into him, which is we're just about all of the 1800 pounds in this thing is at. Not the cleanest way to overtake, but against the Raptor, I'll take it. Oh, come on now, Jeff. Keep it together. Do not want that Raptor getting too close to you again. I'd be fine with a podium here, but I would much rather have a win. This is kind of a hard car to control though, an A-Class with this kind of power in it. Could definitely use just a little more tweaking to the tune, just to get a little bit more stability out of it. Because it is definitely a fairly good chassis for this, it's a very quick car, it's just needs a little more work to control that snap oversteer a little better. I 
have no idea why I was still in fifth gear there. I thought I was in fourth. If I would quit making silly little mistakes like that, I could definitely gain a position or two here, but if I keep doing things like that, it's not going to happen. Oh no, my controller just shut off and I have no sound. Come on now, turn back on. I'm just having a great time in this race today. It's alright, this has definitely been a lot of fun. This is a really interesting vehicle to drive off-road. Definitely everything I thought it would be. Probably a little bit more, too. I wasn't actually expecting the engine swaps that we can have in this, either. So that was... Definitely a big surprise. We definitely have somebody close to us. I keep seeing headlights peeking around here and there. Oh, a little rock pile there slowed me down. I saw it coming too, but I didn't want to just jerk all of a sudden because this thing would have just spun around with where I was at. Oh, another rock. This is going to be a bad section for me. That raptor can easily push through here a lot faster. Seeing a bunch of headlights in my rearview mirror. Just hold on to it a little bit longer. I've only got a couple more turns. I'll gladly take third place, at least it's still a podium. Gotta say, it looks good going across the finish line. Definitely eating my words on what I said about not liking those wheels on anything. Alright guys. So, for my final thoughts on this thing, it's a really fun car, especially here in rallying. I haven't had a chance to do anything else with it except this rally event and taking it off-road but just from that it's definitely a fun little car to build and we definitely have a lot of options in what we can do with it they did a fairly good job with this thing I'm a lot more um i'm a lot more satisfied with it than i thought i was initially going to be i mean i thought it was a really cool car i grew up around hot rods and customs so it's a very memorable car to me i've seen a lot of them. I've read a lot of articles about them in Hot Rod magazines, old custom magazines, so I was looking forward to it, but I thought I was going to be a lot more let down by what we were able to do with this thing and the options they give us for engines. Just the overall customization and the way the thing drives and the kind of fun it is to drive around. So if you haven't got it yet and you do have Forza Horizon 4, I highly recommend you do get this car. Take it out have some fun. If you do have it and want to give my tune a try, I will upload it as soon as I'm done recording here today. And I think that pretty much covers it all, guys. I mean, it's just a really great, fun car to drive around. Even just cruising around, it'd be a really fun car. You could customize it, slam it to the ground, throw some crazy rims on it and a crazy paint job. And it'd be just as fun doing that, probably. So that's going to do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you did. And we just hit a tree because I wasn't looking where I was going. And I'll see you guys next time.